Carolyn DB here. What's the play for today? Well, it has to do with paint pouring and James Bond. Yep, that 007, he had an influence on what's happening today. You see, as I was walking through Ikea, I saw martini glasses. And martini glasses always make me think of James Bond. And then I thought about how would James Bond do paint pouring? If he did it, it would definitely have to be with a martini glass. So that's what I'm going to use today to do a dirty pour. First thing you want to do is get a bunch of layers of color into your cup. Now I'm using the martini glass here, but of course you can use any kind of cup or glass or container that you want. Now the stuff that I'm putting in there, that is Floetrol mixed with acrylic paint. Now how much Floetrol did I put in there versus how much acrylic paint and how did I get my area set up and what are the tools and supplies that I use, all that kind of stuff. Well, I've got all those questions answered for you in a free downloadable printable paint pouring guide. So if you'd like to get the guide, just use the link down below and I'll send it on over to you. So it's taking everything I have not to stir this or shake this just so I can say it like James Bond. But I do know that if I were to stir this or shake this, it would make it not really work for the dirty pour that I'm about to do. Well, now it's time to get things set up. I've got my canvas here. I've made sure it's level. I've got a place to catch the drips. And again, all of that information for you is in that free downloadable paint pouring guide. So now comes the exciting part, the part where you get to see all of that color on the canvas. And all you do is take that cup and simply start pouring that color on there. You can move it around as you're going and make swirls and circles. You can put it on in straight lines. You can put it on in one big puddle. That's the cool thing about this is there's no wrong way to do it. So if this is the canvas that you love and you want it just like this, then you can leave it just like this. And if you think, oh, wow, I got more paint in that glass and I've got that white canvas and I want to cover it up, which that's the camp that I'm in, I'm going to simply add some more to it. There are no rights. There are no wrongs. There are no musts. There are no shoulds. This is just playing with paint. And so you can pour it on in whatever way brings you the most happiness. Now, there are three things that are impacting what I'm about to do. One is I wanted bigger cells than what I've got here. So I want to do something that's going to make the cells a little bit larger looking. The other thing is, is I don't really like the white space there. I love it when paint is running over the sides of the canvas. I really love that look. And then three, there's still paint left in the glass and I want to use that up. I'm about to add more paint to this canvas and there were three factors that helped me make that decision. The first one was I don't really like white space personal preference and so for me I want to cover that white up. The other thing is a practical matter and that is there's still paint left in the cup so this is a chance for me to use that up. And then the third factor that was about what look I want. You see I want to have my cells pulled apart a little bit more than what they are on the canvas right now. I mean they're wonderful they've got all this great detail to them but I'm just in a mood for something a little different. And the reason why I want to have larger cells is the last few canvases I've been doing, they have really tight cells. So here's an example of one, and it's just really the cells are wonderfully tight and detailed. And I'm in the mood for something that has things stretched a little bit larger. So spoiler alert, here's what this canvas is going to look like when it's done. And you see how the cells are a little bit larger? That's the look that I want this time. As I add the paint here to the edge to cover up that white space all around it, some of the paint is going to go over the edge. And as it's doing that, it's going to drip. But it's not going to make a mess anywhere. It's not going to create a big puddle for me because all of the dripping is going into the box. And this is simply a recycled Amazon box that is now my drip catcher. You don't need fancy tools to do paint pouring. You just need to have the right stuff to make it so that things aren't messy, things are easy to use, that kind of thing. So I've got that box to catch the drips and that rack that's on top of it, that's simply a cooling rack from the kitchen section of the store. Now, naturally, of course, once something has been used for paint pouring, say the martini glass or the drying rack, those kinds of things, it's no longer food safe, but you could probably figure that out. Once you've got all the paint on there that you want, then you need to give it some time to drip. And I give mine anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to just let the drips collect in the box so it doesn't make a mess. Now I've sped up the camera here for you so you can see what happens to the paint while it's doing the dripping. And this is when the cells are going to grow. 
Once it's done doing its dripping, then what you want to do is move it onto a drying rack. And yep, my drying racks are about as fancy as my drip box, but the reason why you want to move it over is because your canvas can actually sort of fuse to that wire rack if you leave it there to dry. And how I create the drying racks out of cups and cardboards and that kind of thing, that is also for you in that paint pouring guide that I mentioned earlier, and the link's down below so that I can send that over to you. After about 24 hours of drying, this is what it looks like. So you've got all those wonderful colors and cells and all that movement happening in there. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. If you'd like to see more of what I'm up to, head on over to the website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.